Welcome to Good Success with Dr. Bill Bennett. You'll never, ever, ever walk into destiny without being at least three things. And one of them is a man of conviction. So it doesn't matter whether it's in my faith, my family, my finances, my fitness. I choose to go the right way. But we got a God that'll turn it around, that'll cover you that'll heal you, that'll lift you, that'll strengthen you. Can you think back on some stuff that he brought you through? If he did it before, he'll do it again. Let's, let's pray. Eternal God, Lord, we just thank you. God bless you and praise you for the, the praise and the worship, God, that we've all experienced. God, we thank you for your spirit that rests in this place, oh God. God, now we just ask that you allow your anointing to fall ever the more on your manservant right now, oh God. God, let him hear from heaven, God, and speak what you say, oh God. Lord, we thank you for all of those that are here that have ears to hear, God, and hearts to receive, oh God. God, loosen their ears, God, that they may hear, soften their hearts that they may receive, God, with us, saith the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name that we pray, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Well, we, this is good success, a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church, so I know you got your Bibles, amen? amen? So if you would, please, just turn with me to a, uh, to a, uh, to, to the first, to, to Proverbs chapter, uh, book, the Proverbs chapter 28. Let me slow down. Now, my, my, Settle me, oh, Lord. Okay. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28 and 1. And then later on, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 17. Mm. We learned about three cubs this morning. But this morning, we're going to learn about a mighty lion. <laughs> I'm trying to do. Proverbs 28 and 1. Amen. And it reads, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, the Amplified, the, the, there's another translation that I, that I like because it throws in just one more word that gives it just the, even the more power in that statement, it says, and, and this is the Amplified version, it says, the wicked flee when no man pursues them, but the uncompromisingly righteous, hey. the uncompromisingly righteous, the one that, the, the, the one that does not make excuses, the one that does not, the, the one that does not just go along to get along, the one that, that does not say, okay, I'm a, I'm a compromise today. No. Nah uncompromisingly righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. 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 As you take your seats, as you take your seats, tell the tell all the folks around you to be bold. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold, be bold. Be bold. Be bold on the job. Uh, be bold in the boardroom. Amen. Be bold in your house. Be bold in the church. Uh, in everything that you do. Everything that you do, be bold, amen? Now, when we think about something being bold, it, it, it carries the idea that something is bright or it, it stands out. Like an important idea when you're reading something that, that's emboldened on the paper or it's highlighted, it, it, it stands out. The word bold also implies something or someone that has the ability to take risks, amen? Amen. Your leaders are bold because they, they, they stand out front. They, they, they make the decisions and they're not worried about the opinions of other people because they are making the decisions. Amen. They're putting their lives on the line, possibly their reputations, their money, their funding, everything that they have. They're bold about it. They're not worried about what's going to happen. See, the, they, they, it implies that someone has the ability to take risks. It, it carries the notion of being confident and courageous, not concerned about the results. Amen? Amen? And if I were just to sum it all up, all of the characteristics of being bold, I would just say 
bold stands out. You see, bold has an attitude. It's, 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 it establishes a presence that's not diminished by the things around it. Amen? But on the contrary, boldness changes its environment. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all have seen people that walk in with, with, with just super loud colors on? No matter how bright the room is, when they walk in the room, the room gets brighter. Why? Because of that super bright, super loud shirt that they got on. That boldness of that causes you to look at them. It, it, it draws in your attention. So when you're bold, trust and believe you're going to have eyes on you. Somebody gonna be looking at you when you're when you're bold, when you're when you're proud, when you're standing out, when you're bold for Jesus, amen. And I, mean, I can just imagine what people said about John the Baptist when he was out in the wilderness just yelling. I'm sure some folk thought he was crazy when he was just out there yelling about this man that ain't nobody ever seen that he said was going to change the world. Amen. He was bold enough to declare that. I ain't even worthy enough to carry his shoes. But he was coming. He was talking about the, 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 the boldest one of them all. Amen. The one that stood before the, 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 the Sadducees and the Pharisees and declared that he is the one. He is who he was. Amen. Amen. The one that was before was, was. Amen. Amen. You got to be bold to be a 12-year-old kid to stand in the middle of the synagogue and tell him, I am God. And start to and proceed to teach the elders in their own church. That's boldness. You see, those that are bold, they embrace danger. That even though danger might be present, they 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 don't care because they have a purpose. They're on assignment. There is something that they have to do. It's something that they have to get. I would have to consider that woman with an issue of blood mighty bold. Because what did she do? She did, She fought her way through the crowd. Amen. Not to get face to face with Jesus, but just to touch Amen. the hem of his garment. She had to have a level set of boldness about her to fight through, to crawl, even though, to, to, to get there. My man, Blind Bartimaeus. I consider him a bold character too, because what did he do? He sat by the wayside and yelled at Jesus. Even though everybody told him to shut up, man, be quiet. What did he do? He said out, Rabbi, Jesus, son of man, have mercy on me. See, if you're bold, you get hurt. A colloquialism said the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The one that yells out, the one that hollers out, the one that's bold enough to go after God, that's the one that gets the healing, amen? Amen, amen. because if Bartimaeus had followed what the crowd said and, and closed his mouth in the in the midst of his healing, he'd never be able to see. Amen. But he yelled out. He was bold enough to say, Jesus, son, son of God. My, my, my. And, and, and Jesus answered him. He said, what, what, what can I do for you? My, 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 my. What do you need? He was like, I would like to see what are you crying out for? My, 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 what my, is your boldness causing you to holler out for? My God. But has your situation kept your mouth quiet? Mm. Have you sunken back into your your your, your situation where you, you're not you're not quite as bold as you think think you could be, amen? Mm. You see the bold, we 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 have a purpose. I'm bold. Amen. So I say we. I'm sure all of you all have have a, a level set of boldness, amen. amen. So I say we. Uh, we gonna make we 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 making this thing personal to us. Amen. We amen. we are bold and we are in it to win it, amen. 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 The the the, poet, the Roman poet Virgil penned it like this: Audentis futura luvat. Any Latin speakers in the house besides Dr. Pierce? Mm. Well, for those that don't speak Latin. Virgil penned it in, in, in Aldentus Futuna Luvat. That means favors. He said, fortune favors the bold. Amen. 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 Fortune favors the bold. bold. Now, 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 Virgil was talking about position, power, money, 
all of those, all, all of those material things. He, he, was, he was saying, if you're bold enough to go get it, you can have it. Amen? amen. But that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily not apply to us. Amen? Because God causes us to be bold. Amen? amen. Psalms 84 and 11 said, for the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. Amen? Amen. See, Virgil was talking about earthly reward. Mm. But God is talking about heavenly reward. Amen? Because I did read somewhere that said he would open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 But that's the fortune that we get when we're bold. Amen. But if we're timid. My, 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 my. If we're worried about what they're going to say. My, my, my. If they're worried about somebody saying you asking for too much. My, 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 my. If you're saying that that's too big even for you to ask for. Hey. You never have it. Hey. Hey. Bartimaeus would still be blind to this day. Hey. If he didn't holler out. Amen. Hey. The woman with the issue of blood would still be bleeding. My, had she my, not my, my, my. pressed her way. Oh. For the, for, to touch the hem of his garment. Now, now, when I say bold, my, 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 my. we got to be careful my, my, my. that we resist the temptation of allowing our boldness to give way to arrogance. Amen. Hebrews, 14, Hebrews 4 and 16 tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and, and find grace to help in the time of need. What? Got a caveat there. It's one thing to be boldly confident in who we are and what we can do, humbly knowing that it's only by God's grace and his mercy that we have what we have to do what we can do. It's another thing altogether when it's all about you. Come on, man. See, when I replaces he, mm. when what I did replaces what God has graced me to do, mm. when I take the credit for something God has done, you run the very real risk of your spiritual boldness morphing into carnal arrogance. Amen. Your humility Amen. becomes hubris. Mama. And your Christ-centered convictions convert to a conceited character. Mama. When you get to the point where your pride overtakes your praise, Mama. you're setting yourself up for a disaster. Mama. Now ask me how I know. Mama. Because Proverbs 16 and 18 was written for me. Woo. For those that ain't familiar with Proverbs 16 and 18, I, I'll clue you in as to what it says. And it's very familiar. It said, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Now, I'm a, I, and I'm going to say this. I'm a talented brother. God has blessed me to do some things that only he could allow me to do. I'm talented through God. Amen. I'm talented. Hear what I say. But through God. Amen. A lot of us in here have talents. My, my, my. We have skills. We have abilities. And unfortunately, some of us think it's all about us. Yeah. It's all about the stuff we were born with. You're absolutely right. We were born with it. But God put it on the inside of you yeah. to be able to do what it is that you do. Amen. Amen. So we have to give applicable credit to where it's, what credit is due. Amen. God is responsible yeah. for everything that I've been able to do, amen? Yeah. But that ain't always been so. Uh, about two years ago, uh, about two years ago, I learned the, the, the literal meaning of pride coming before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall, amen? Amen. You see, God gave me the ability to build stuff with my hands. I love building. Amen. And since I was a little boy, I loved remote control cars. Y'all stay with me. Watch, watch what happens. Amen. I love remote control cars. Amen. And I have built a many of them. Mm. Well, this one that I, this particular one that I built, it was built and designed to run very, very fast. And when I say very, very fast, we're talking 150, 160 oh, wow. real miles an hour. Oh, now, I'm out on the road with a few of my friends. And we're, we're, we're enjoying our cars because there, there are a bunch of us that are enthusiasts this way. Amen. Well, my car did 145 one day. 
My friend's car did 170, another one did 180, and I'm like, I built this car to do 160, 170, 180, but it's only managing 145 today. That bothered my pride. Because I'm amongst fellow enthusiasts, but I'm not up to their standard. Y'all see where I'm going now? And, and, and I'd already made my run. I put my car up. So I was like, all right, it was a good run. I'm satisfied. But when I saw their cars run, something said, you know what? You built this car to run like this. You know what this car can do. Get it back out. Put it back on the road. Let's get what you know you're supposed to be able to get. Notice what I'm saying. I'm using all of the, pro the, the pronouns that refer to who? You. Me. Yeah. Amen. I'm all in this. This ain't nothing about God. This is all about me and what I'm trying to prove to my friends that I run with. Yeah. Ain't got nothing to do with God. Yeah. This is all about me. Yeah. So what did I do? I took the car that it was put up. Mm -hmm. I was. I should have. I, I should have been what Paul said and be content oh. at where I was. But no, that was not. Good enough. I took the car back out. I put it back on the road. I ran it down the road and I brought it back. But in the midst of me bringing it back, it lost control. Wow. It skidded it into me. I did not have the ability to jump out of the way of my own foolishness. And I broke my right foot and my left ankle at the same time. My pride. Destroyed my aim, my aim, and 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 the force, the the impacted force of the car hitting me caused my fall. It's a very practical, practical, practical application of what I read in the word that destruction then the fall because I had to get myself back up in a broken state. I had I had four broke toes. And a broken ankle, I had to get myself up off the road, gather my things, hobble my way back to my truck, drive home from Baltimore, about an hour from my house, all in pain, all broke up, all because I gave in to my pride. So, Pastor, when I say I ain't got no more pride to... To, 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 to talk about, I ain't got no more pride to talk about. Because I learned on that day that pride comes before destruction and a holy spirit before the fall. You can be as bold as you want in God. You can be as bold as you want in something. But you got to have the right attitude when you step out to do it. Amen. I had the attitude of me. That I was going to do this. I was going to impress somebody. So that's a word to somebody today. If you're doing something in the, in the, in the, in the, in the effort to try to impress somebody, stop. Because that's pride. Amen. You ain't got to worry about improve, uh, uh, approving or the approval of anybody else but God. Because we, we have an audience, as Pastor says, that up one. God approves what we do. Amen. Amen. So we ain't got to step out. We ain't got to run with the wrong crowd. We ain't got to run with the in crowd. We ain't got to run with the out crowd. All we got to run is in his crowd. We got to be in that number. Amen. When we are called up. Amen. You see, when we run, when, when we do what we do, we got to have a, 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 a Romans 12 and 2 mindset. You see, I, if our thinking is off, if your motives are dirty, if, it, if, if all of your thought is about yourself, we're setting ourselves up for a destructive fall. No, 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 no. See, so many young people and old ones, for that matter, are doing things in the wrong mindset. No, no, no. For too long, we have conformed to this world, and we don't know what, God will, what God's will is for our lives. Amen. That's why Romans 12, uh, 12 and 2 admonishes us that we got to get our minds right. Yes. We have to renew our minds so that we know what, what God's perfect will is for our lives. Amen? Yeah. And once we do that, we'll have to be bold enough to challenge others to do the same. Amen? We have to encourage our young folks. Yeah. We have to challenge them to come to church. We have to remind them over and over and over and over again the, the, to pay their tithes and then to have a quiet time with the Lord. We have to encourage them to read the word. And seek his answers for our problems. Amen. 
The world will give us a litany of, 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 of ways and, and, and solutions to God's problems, but when it's it's a problem that only God can solve, the world, can, no matter what the world tells you to do, the problem will never get solved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Swag means saved with amazing grace. Yeah. And because we're all saved, because we, again, I said we making it personal with Amen. all of us today, because we all are saved with amazing grace, we have to be bold enough to tell somebody else how to get swagged out. Amen. Amen. We got to go out and tell everybody else how to get swagged out. Amen. 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 In the text of the morning. The eight laws of Proverbs 28 and 1 says, the wicked flee mm -hmm. when, there's no, when there's no one pursuing. Amen. They're seemingly running mm -hmm. from nothing. Amen. Well, 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 why are they running if nothing is chasing them? That's a good question, and I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Sin makes cowards of us all. Amen. Sin Amen. makes cowards of us all. Amen. We turning around looking for something that ain't even there. Why? That might be your conscience telling you that you done did something wrong. When you worried about what somebody might think or somebody might say because of what you may have done or may have gone, that might be the sin in your life making you a, a, a little paranoid. Because if you're not careful, sin paralyzes and pauses what God has for you. Amen. Amen. It'll stop you from going where you need to go because it it, it did already put in your mind that you're not worthy enough to go there anymore. Amen. 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 See, folks are scared of, of failure while others are scared of their own success and what may come from what come from it. Amen. Ooh. Amen. You may not you some folk don't want to move because they're scared that they might be successful. <laughs> Because with that success, it might come with a little more work. It might come with a little more responsibility. It might be just a little bit hard. But hard work ain't never killed nobody. Amen. But with hard work comes a bigger check. Yeah. But with that check comes responsibility. Yes. So you can't allow the fear of that and fear is sin. I want you to know that because. With it, with it seeing, just for all them, it's anything that doesn't line up with the word of God. Amen. And I ain't never seen no, I've never seen in the in the word of God where it says fear is a good thing. Amen. Amen. There's a there's a good help, there's a healthy apprehension mm. when when going into a, a place that you ain't familiar with. Ma, ma, ma. But fear shouldn't stop you from going ma, ma, to a place ma. that you don't know. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. We learn that way. Amen. Mm -hmm. But see, that was me. Mm. That was me. I used to be that guy. No, 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 the term. Used to. I can smoke and grill. I, I can smoke and burn a kitchen. Amen. I am confident in that. I ain't never met a grill or a kitchen that I can't smoke or burn out. I can cook. Amen. In, 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 in southern terms, I can burn. Amen. But but when I first but when I first started out, I didn't have the I didn't have the confidence to, to think I could do, you know, a, a 50 person party or a 100 person party or a 150 person party because now I'm starting to worry about, well, what if they don't like the food or, or, or what, or, 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 or what if my budget runs out and I, and, and I run out of money or, or, or this or that. See, the enemy, when you, when God is starting to set you up for greatness, the enemy gonna always come in and start to talk, start to undermine what God is doing in your life. You get a you, you get a prosperous uh, 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 potential for a great job, but all uh, the enemy gonna come in. So you sure? <laughs> that 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 job got some mean qualifications. You sure you qualify for? Well, I've been told that sometimes you just gotta you you you, you gotta go for it. And you gotta be in it. To win it, amen. You gotta, it doesn't matter what the qualifications on the paper say. God qualifies me for everything, amen. God qualifies me for everything. But see, I had all of this stuff running in my in, in my head. And I had to come to myself and say, you know what? That ain't boldness. Amen. That ain't boldness. So so recognizing that I had to remind myself in 2 Timothy 
2, 1 and 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I had to dip down to Romans 8 and 37 that reminds us that yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then I had to go over to uh, 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 Philippians and visit 4 and 13 to be reminded that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then I had to be challenged and encouraged over in Joshua 1 and 9 where it tells me to be strong. Yes, sir. And courageous. Amen. You see, and because of all of this, Romans 3 and 22 tells us that be, it, we are made right mm. with God through our faith mm -hmm. in Jesus. Is your faith in Jesus? Amen. Is your faith in Jesus? Yes, Amen. And be, be, because we're made right in him, whatever that thing is that you're trying to get done, encourage yourself. Mm. Tell yourself, declare it over your life. Ain't no flea in me. And then the two or three people say it again. Get it in your spirit. Ain't no flea in me. Ain't no flea in me, amen. Ain't no flea. Ain't no flea in me. Now to be part of that verse says, but the scale. But the but the worldly. But the carnal. But the flesh. But that ain't what my Bible said. My Bible said. But the godly are as bold as the lions. Whatever difficulties the righteous meet in the way of their duty, they are not daunted. Amen. The godly are as bold as the lions. Now you see, there's something about a lion. It's known to be the king of all beasts. It's, in, it, it's incredibly brave and knows no equal. Ma, ma, ma. On the plains of Africa, mm. the harshest environments, the, the, the lion roams free. Mm. When you think of a lion, you think of a majestic beast that radiates strength and power. Mm. When you see a lion, all other animals get out of the way. You see, ma, God ma. didn't make a mistake uh. when he said the godly are as bold as lions. Ma, ma, ma. You see, lions don't fear. In nature, they operate with the mindset that nothing is too big for them to bring down. From the wildebeest to the water buffalo, from giraffe to giselle, even the enormity of an elephant, a lion, because it, it believes it can take down anything, will challenge anything. Amen? Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because it was born that way. It was born. That way. See, a lion was never a, a, a lion was never taught to be fearful. When, 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 when cubs go out with their mothers to hunt, they're watching what their mother does, and then what do they do? They imitate what their mamas do. When, 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 when the pride leader, the male, goes out and he sits. And he watches the, 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 the younger male lions, they sit and they watch the pride leader because they understand who the leader is. And when they go out and watch what the leader does, they then do what the leader does. They don't see a leader running away from a gazelle. They don't see a leader running away from an elephant. They don't see a leader running away from a water buffalo. They see the leader going after them. And because that's the leader, because that's the leader. They follow the leader. When I see my leader not daunted with, 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 with city politics, when I see my leader being patient and not worrying about what's happening, all I know in my life is I know I can sit back, I can be patient, I can endure like a good soldier because I know in the end that I'm going to win. Amen? Follow the leader. Because it's in my DNA. Ah, do you know you're a lion? Do you know you're a lion? You ain't got to be scared of it. You ain't got to be scared of a slight word because you're a lion. You ain't got to be be scared of a, 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 a bad doctor's report because you're a lion. You ain't got to be scared of a pink slip because you're a lion. You ain't got to be worried about bills that got to be paid because you're a lion. When you face situations that are bigger than you, you possess the inner strength of that lion 
that God has made you out to be. So you ain't got to worry about no crazy boss on your job. When they're coming at you, just tell them, I'm a lion. You ain't got to be bad about it. You ain't got to be braggadocious or loud about it. You just tell them, I'm a lion. And if you don't want to tell them, just go buy your toy lion and sit it on your desk. <laughs> to remind those that see you when you walk by your desk, the lion, the lion, the lion. The lion is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a lion. Yes, sir. You're a lion. Ooh. You're a lion. Yeah. In the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, uh -huh. my, 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 my. we get introduced to another lion. Yeah. In the morning service, I, 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 we, we, we talked about three, 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 three young cubs that grew into lions and yeah. Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro. Yeah. Those were lions because they stood on on business, as, yeah. as folks would say. That now they they stood on what they they believed, regardless of what was about to happen to them. They understood what was about to happen, but they were still yet undaunted in what their purpose and their convictions were. They said, oh, king. Oh, king. All due respect, bro. But I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. We're not bound to you. We're not bound to your gods. We're not bound to you. So if you got to throw us in the furnace, hey. Do what you need to do, yes, and just and, 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 and just and, and we're gonna move on to, to to my boy David. But but just so you know, mm -hmm. the only folk that died that day <laughs> were the soldiers that put Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fire. Come on now, don't miss that. My, my, my. Don't miss that. My, my, my. The only ones that died were the only ones that went along <laughs> with the command. The ones that stood firm. The ones that knew who they were. Those were the ones that lived to see the other day. And then they affected the environment. Not, not just the environment, but the nation in which they, in, that, that they inhabited. Amen. Amen and amen. But in chapter 17 of, of 1 Samuel, we see godly boldness on display. Uh, I get excited when I talk about David in this year. Because uh, David was a young man. Young man that knew no fear. You know why he knew no fear? Because he knew who he was. And how did he know who he was? Because he had receipts on what, on what God did and what God can do. Amen. Amen. Too many of us get discouraged and get despondent because we forget our receipt book. Amen. We forget what God has done. I can pull up receipt after receipt after receipt to show the greatness of my God. Amen. I told the morning crowd I got kicked out of college. Yeah. In 1993, I graduated from college in 2001. Yeah. Amen. They kicked me out of the United States Air Force Academy, but in 2016, I retired from the Air Force. Amen. So there is no good thing that God will withhold from you if you walk up right. He lets you know that He's going to work everything together for good if you just do what you're supposed to do. Amen. He worked it all together good for David, 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 this, this young boy, Jesse's youngest boy, the one that was looked over for King. He, he, he was, he was the, he was the discarded of them all. He was the overlooked. How many of y'all been overlooked? How many of y'all seemingly discarded by people of power? Amen. David, David, David. He was he's the he he was the living embodiment of godly boldness my, my, my. because uh, 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 he took his assignment he he, he he his assignment was to go his dad sent him to check on his older brothers Amen. his older brothers were were, were were sent off to war they were on the front line uh, in this great Israelite Philistine battle mm -hmm. and 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 Jesse wanted to know how his boys were doing he was like come take some food sure. and, and and bring me back word. Yeah. On how my boys are doing. Yeah. He sent David. To do that. And, and when David got there. He was like. I see everybody. Standing around. Ain't nobody fighting. Because across the way. Goliath stood there. Just, just running. Bumping gums. 
to the Philistine, to, to the Israelite army saying, who, who, who got enough to come get me? I'm going to kill all of y'all. Step up. I got you. And David was a big cat. I mean, and, and, and Goliath was a giant in comparison to what, what they described David as a little boy. And, 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 and David went up to Saul and was like, hey, what's really going on? We, we surrounded by a host of soldiers, but yet you letting this one cat desecrate our God, desecrate the name of our God in your army. Man, what are you? What are you doing? Wow. We can't get down on David. We can't get on we can't get down on Saul though. Because you letting a, you letting a little in, you letting a little uh, uh, a little setback stop you from going forward. You you you've allowed a, a little setback to become a giant in your life because you're scared to do it again. Hey, I'm speaking from experience. I know what it is. I got a house now. Yeah. 13 years ago I was I, I was Saul. Yeah. Staring down financial institutions saying that your credit is terrible. Yeah. And you've been a poor steward all your life. Why am I going to give you money? My, my, my. That, was a, that, 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 that was. Yeah. But I remember yeah. I had a wife. Mm -hmm. And she spoke life into me. Yeah. So I bless the Lord for her. Yeah. Now, she was bold enough. She was bold enough to, to speak to her husband. And speak and, and, and get me out of the cowardice that I was in. My, my, my. Because I was afraid to face mm -hmm. what I was in my past. Yeah. My, my, my. That's a word for somebody. My, face my, my, my. your past. Yeah. Get over it. Do yeah. what my boy uh Eminem would say, make your past, make your past ghost exercise. Yeah. Exercise. Make them do jumping jacks. Amen. Get them out of your life. Because if you don't, your past will continue to hold you. My, my, my. See, David didn't have that problem because he had receipts of the past. My, my, See, he my, went my. up to King Saul and he, and he told Saul, he was like, look, I tell you what, since ain't none of y'all worthy or, or willing to do it, I do it myself. Amen. And Saul was like, no, you're just a boy. Right. My, my. You're just a woman. You too old. You too young. You ain't big enough. You ain't qualified. You ain't never did nothing. You ain't never gonna do nothing. This is what David was telling. This is what Saul was telling David when he approached him and said, "I'm a killer." And 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 and, and, Saul, and and David said, "Well, well, no. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. Because my God." has delivered me from the paw of the bear. And because I got experience in killing lions, my God is going to surely keep me this day and deliver Goliath into my hand. Saul, because Saul couldn't understand it, because Saul couldn't fathom the thought of a boy doing something that he couldn't, that's a word for somebody, you're going to run into people that can't fathom you doing something that they can't. Because they, because you can't, they think that because they can't, they think you can. And they will put their ineffectiveness, they'll put their inefficiencies, they'll put that all on you. Psychiatrists call that projection. They'll project their, they'll project who they are on you. But there wasn't, but, but there wasn't David in this case. Because David was a lion. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was it was appropriate that he was in the tribe of Judah, the lion of Judah, amen, of the lion of, of the tribe of Judah. See, David, David, they, they, they were like, okay, okay. So now that Saul was like, all right, you, you, you real serious about this thing? Well, take this, take this, and take this. David said, I don't need that. I don't need all of that. See again. Somebody gonna try to give you what they had to make it work for them. But you gotta tell them that don't work for me. I know who my God is and I am persuaded. He can get me through this. So what did David do? David used what God provided. The thing that he was apt to use. See, in 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 life you gotta use those things that you're familiar with, amen. Amen. In the military, you don't shoot another person's weapon. 
You don't allow somebody else to give you their weapon. Why? Because you're not familiar with it. You haven't been tried with it. David was good with a slingshot. He was tried with the weapon of his warfare. Amen. What's your weapon of warfare? I'm familiar with it. Are you? The Bible is my weapon of warfare. I'm familiar with it because it can solve me through battles. The world will give you this, that, and third. The world will say, use Prozac. Uh, the world will say, go get therapy. The world will say, take this or that drug. Ah, prescribe the body. It'll get me through anything and everything that I need. So David steps up. David steps up with the boldness that God gave him. That God put on the inside of him. And said, man, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to cut your head off too. And he said that in front of everybody. Ma, 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 ma. Now it's important that you say that in front of everybody. Ma, ma, it's important ma, 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 ma. that people see God's boldness in you, hey. not your boldness in you. Because yeah. now you can, you now now you have the ability to encourage, yeah. to influence, and then to show what God yeah. can Glory do. To God. Yes, Come on. Glory to God. So we know the uh, we know the end of the thing. David stepped up. He picked up five smooth stones. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, as an as an average slingshot, as he 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 looked at the stones, he was like, "Yep, that is of the right aerodynamic profile." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He he looked over at, at Goliath. He said, "Yeah, I got a big." Notice that Goliath was huge. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, I got a big target this time." He was like, "Sometimes I gotta throw these things at wolves, and they're small." Oh, but that Goliath is easy to hit. God has made him easy to hit. And with, ah, one, one good swipe, down goes Goliath. Yeah. Awesome. 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 But he was bold enough to step up to the fight. Amen. He was bold enough not to, not to quake in, 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 in the, in, in the, in the, in the moment. In the moment. In the moment of battle, mm, mm. you gotta be bold. Yes. Mm. In the moment of battle, you have to be decisive. Yes. In the moment of battle, you gotta know who's fighting which. Yes. Yes. I bid you good morning, good success as my, I take my, my seat. Ah, uh, despite what may befall you, my, 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 my. when you make when you take a bold stand for Jesus, ah, yeah. uh, the arrows gonna fly. Yes. The fires are going to burn. Yes. The breakers are going to crash. Yes. The storm is going to come. Yes. Ah, you will be lied on. Yes. You're going to be schemed against. Yes. But because of our boldness, though we are hard pressed on every side, mm -hmm. ah, we are not crushed. Perplexed, yes. but we are not in despair. Persecuted, yes. but we are not abandoned. Struck down, yes. but we are not destroyed. Because our boldness is in Jesus Christ. Our delight is in the Lord and we will be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season whose leaf shall not wither and whatever it does shall prosper. I leave you with this. Your boldness will make you steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. Good success. Look at your neighbor to your left and to your right and tell them to be bold. Look at your other neighbor and tell them to be bold. Amen. Be bold. Amen. Amen. This is Dr. Bill Bennett from Good Success Church in Washington, D.C., and I want to thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you today. 
Listen, if you are ever in the D.C., Maryland, or Virginia area, we welcome you to come by and visit with us. I'm sure you'll be inspired by our services. And we're located at 4401 Sheriff Road, Northeast, in the Deanwood community of Washington, D.C. Listen, if you'd like more information about the church and all of the various things that we're doing, we'd love for you to give us a call at 202-398-3000, or you can certainly tune in to our website at goodsuccesschurch.org, goodsuccesschurch.org, or you can certainly connect with us on all the social media platforms, Good Success Church DC, and we'd love to connect with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.